Okay, so hello, good morning, thanks for being here today to listen to my presentation. My name is Rajiv and I present to you the topic of advertising in different cultures today. Regarding questions and discussion, I'd like to do that at the end of my presentation, so if you have any questions, please um, note them down so we can talk about them later. So let's begin. What will I be talking about in the presentation? First, I will talk about what is culture, what does it consist of? And then I'll give you two examples of how advertisements have been adapted to differing cultures. The first example is Mariah Carey's CD cover and how that has been uh, advertised and adapted in the USA and Saudi Arabia. And then I'll talk about Snickers and how they did what is called globalization. We'll come to that later. Okay, so first of all, what is culture? Now the first thing you notice when you go to a culture, to a country, is of course the language, food, and clothing. Then we have religion, traditions, for example in the US, and the turkey on Thanksgiving. Then we have norms, values, and of course also hope to is five dimensions of culture. Masculinity, low versus high power, uh, low versus high yeah, power distance, low versus high uncertainty avoidance. Let's for example take the US and Germany. In Germany, people are very perfectionist and they almost have a fear of making mistakes. So they have a very high uncertainty avoidance. Whether in the US, people have a very low uncertainty avoidance. They see making mistakes as an opportunity to grow and to learn from them. Then we have individualism versus collectivism and long versus short term orientation. Uh, later on, another a sixth aspect was added to this list, which was indulgence. The first example I will give you covers the aspect of religion. The second example of Snickers covers the other three aspects of traditions, values, and individualism versus collectivism. Okay, so let's begin with the first example I want to talk about. On the left side, the two photos, is how Mariah Carey CD cover was advertised in the USA. On the right side, the two photos, is how it was advertised in Saudi Arabia. So as you probably already noticed, the difference is that in the US American version you can see more naked body of Mariah Carey. And the Saudi Arabians, they photoshop the original version and they put more clothes on Mariah Carey than in the original version. So why did they do that? Because of religion. In Saudi Arabia 90% of the population is Muslim. And in their religion they have a very strict dress code for women, what they can and what they cannot wear. So women um, cannot wear heavy makeup, tight clothes and light fabric, or if you will, see-through clothes. And they have to wear um, decent clothes. What is for Saudi Arabians decent means that um, the clothes have to cover their chest, wrists and ankles. That's considered decent in Saudi Arabia. Okay, so that's why we can see this difference. Let's move on to the next example I want to give you now of Snickers. They did what is called globalization. So they had one global ad campaign that they spread out to many different countries, but they adapted the advertisement a little bit, depending on the culture they advertised it to. But the main message of the advertisement and the slogan remained the same. The slogan being, you're not you when you're hungry. Now I want to compare the USA with China. Let's look at the US American version of the advertisement first. Chinese version. Hey, 
pick a spot. Okay, so you may already, you maybe have already noticed some differences, but yeah, let's actually look at what the difference, at what some of the differences are. I found this really interesting article on the internet, which made a thorough and in-depth analysis of all the differences that are there in these two advertisements. I will just focus on a few of them, which I think are very important and interesting. So let's begin with the first difference: old versus young protagonist. So in the American version. We have an old woman, Betty White, who was an American actress. She just passed away recently, unfortunately. And in the Chinese version, we have um, a young goalkeeper who is also a woman. Now, why doesn't the Chinese maintain that aspect of that elderly woman? Why did they take a young woman? That has to do a lot with tradition. Chinese people have a lot of respect for elderly people. Whether in the USA, this extreme gender inequality doesn't exist. So everyone is the same, basically. It doesn't matter how old or young you are. So if the Chinese would have taken an elderly woman and portrayed her as being very weak, because both and both advertisements, both women are being portrayed as being very weak. So if they would have taken an elderly woman and portrayed her as weak, that probably would have been very offensive to the Chinese audience, and the advertisement would therefore um, would would back would have uh, backfired therefore. Now let's move on to the next difference that we see: individualism versus collectivism, or if you will, social versus individual problem. In the USA, the USA emphasizes individual performance. So if you make a mistake, you have to make up for it. It's your responsibility. It's your mistake. Make it better next time. And Betty White is approached as individual with a problem. Whether in the Chinese version is rather the social problem. A Chinese core value is um, harmonious relationships. Oh, harmonious relationships. So, um, and it's, it's harmonious relationships. And if one person in the group is weak, in this case a goalkeeper, that person destroys the collective harmony within the group. And therefore, that person has to face collective indignation. And also, everyone gets upset in the group, not just one person, but everyone. So it's a social problem. And after, in fact, she ate the snicker, everyone was able to play again. After she ate the snicker, she became this, she became this man, and they happily continued to play. And now let's look at the last difference that we see, which is the primary brand association versus the second very brand association. So what do I mean by that? The, the primary brand association is the main message that Snickers wants to convey to their audience in every culture. That's the same for every culture. So the primary brand association is Snickers being the hunger-busting solution. So if you eat Snickers, you won't feel hungry anymore. So the primary brand association is Snickers being the hunger-busting solution. Now the secondary brand association that can vary a lot from cultural audience to cultural audience because it has to do a lot with the different values again of cultures. So for the U.S. American audience, that audience will probably have a secondary brand association of Snickers that if you eat the chocolate bar, you will be strong and competitive again, and you will feel energetic and you won't be weak anymore. For the Chinese audience. Um, their secondary brand association will probably be that if you eat the Snickers, the collective harmony within the group will be restored again. So these were some of the differences. To sum up, what did I talk about in my presentation today? I first talked about culture. What is culture? What does it consist of? And then I gave you two examples of how advertisements have been adapted to different cultures. The first example of Mariah Carey CD cover, and now that was advertised in the U.S. in Saudi Arabia. And then we looked at the Snickers company and how they did what is called globalization. I compared the U.S. American version of their advertisement with their Chinese version of the advertisement. And then I looked at the differences and I talked about why there are these differences in the advertisements. 
So that concludes my presentation. Thanks for listening. And now we have time for the Q&A and discussion. Are there any questions? If not, then I have two questions for you.